Nobody like you in all the years. We love you this morning. Just lift your hands right now, Father. We worship you. Shine on darkest night. 
Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, in every situation, we thank you that you have never left our side. We thank you, Lord, that we serve a consistent and a persistent and a faithful God. Lord, in every situation, we give you praise. In every situation, Lord, we thank you that you are there and you haven't left our side. Lord, even sometimes when we don't feel you, Lord, the fact that we're here today, we know that you have never left us. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. We give you all the praise that you're due, Lord. And everyone in the church said, amen. Amen, amen. You guys can start making your way back to your seats. <sighs> I just love the Lord. Huh, I do. Uh, my name is Anastasia Brokus. My husband and I, Nick Brokus, are the Sunday service coordinators here at Epic. And um, on behalf of um, our pastors here who we love and honor, Pastor Steve and Dr. Shirley Arnold, we want to welcome you guys to Epic. Um, whether you're a first-time guest or you're a returning member, we are so honored that you guys are here this morning. If you guys wouldn't mind turning your attention to the screen, we have a few announcements for you guys. Are you new to the area and you would like to know where things are? Or maybe you want to get connected but not really sure how? Well, after service, go to the information desk and someone will be there to help you. Come join us this coming Tuesday at 6.30 for All Church Prayer. If you are ready to become stronger in your walk with God and overcome the challenges that life brings, then mark your calendar and get ready. In the month of September, we'll be focusing on the topic, Stronger. Fall Life Groups are here and it isn't too late to sign up. This year we will have equipping classes which will meet on Sundays and Wednesdays. We will also have community groups which will meet throughout our community. So if you would like to get connected, this is a great way to get involved. You can sign up now in the lobby or go online at epiclakeland.com. Please join us Sunday, September the 6th for Growth Track 1.0. We are calling all men who are ready to walk fearless to mark your calendars from November 13th through 15th. This is your weekend to encounter God and have a life-changing experience. We will be going to Camp Gilead in Polk City, Florida. The cost will be $80 per person, and you must be at least 18 years or older to attend. You can sign up today in the lobby or see Nick Brokus or Bill Gonzalez. Right. Good morning. It's my privilege this morning to receive our tithes and offerings. So if you, as you're getting that ready... I'm just thinking about how um, giving our tithes and giving our offerings is an investment in faith. It's not, we don't give so we can get and all, all of the things that we say and we give and you want to be so rich and all of these things, but it's more that it's an investment of faith. And when we invest, you know, as the start market goes and things like that, we, we expect a return. We, we ne hope that there's never a deficit. We hope that there's never a, a crash of any kind that would cause us to lose what we have. But we are investing in the greatest market that exists in the world. It always yields a positive dividend. It always returns back greater than what is invested. It always comes back with a blessing. It always comes back with a favor. It always comes back with something that is greater, exponentially greater than we could expect. Uh, you know, Malachi teaches that if you give, that your story, when you get back, when you receive, that the storehouses will be so full and overflowing that you will not even have room to contain it. That's the kind of investment of faith that we are making when we say, you know what? As, as a family, as a person, I am going to tithe. I am going to give. I'm, I am making an investment on faith because I believe that giving unto the Lord is, is a great thing and it is a right thing. And as a result of that, we begin to invest in faith that returns a yield. I had to write a paper recently about giving and 
and we had to say, you know, what, what we're going to do and how, how does investment work and, you know, should Christians be rich and, and all of those kinds of things. And I, yeah, I said, you know what, it really comes down to the intent of the heart. Are you going to invest on faith? Do you believe what the Bible says or do you not believe what the Bible says? And if, you, if you're just maybe on the fence and it's like, well, maybe it does and maybe oh, try it. You have to try the start market if you know it's gonna if you made the right decision or not. You have to study all the stuff and make sure that where you're investing is, is gonna be a profitable area. Try it. The scriptures say, try me. Try me. Make that investment of faith today. If today's your first time, and you know what? You're just like, man, I don't I it's something I really have. The churches are always kind of talking about money and all of these things. And you know what? Just try it then. See if your investment of faith doesn't return more than you can even hold, more than you can even possibly imagine the favor that comes back to you, the blessing that comes back to you. It may not be money. It may not be a money tree growing in your backyard, but your money may go further than what you anticipated it to go. Your gas tank may last longer than, than the 300 miles that it normally does. You may get 375 out of it or 450 out of it. What you do is, is you are moving into it. And making an investment on faith that will return back to you. Amen? Would you stand with me this morning? Here at Epic Church, we receive our tithes and offerings separate. We believe our tithes is a tenth and a set, holy and apart to the Lord. And then we receive our offerings, which is over and above. So at this time, if you would, please come forward with your tithe. with us before they move to Atlanta. And, you know, I want to take an opportunity. Uh, Seth, can, Seth, can you come up here? You mind? Come on, man. Come on. I, I want to receive an offering for them. I, you know, you never know when you might need a little gas money or a little food money to help you out. Or maybe some paint money because the color on the wall doesn't really match your color palette. <laughs> But uh, they have been great. They have been faithful. Um, I, it's, it's a bittersweet moment, too. It's family. Um, so uh, it, it's just been, you know, when you know you got people on your side that will help you whenever, no matter what, that's a great thing. And when they're no longer there, uh, my wife was saying uh, she found a, a video uh, of their wedding. And I was like, oh, man, it was VHS. <laughs> <laughs> a VHS tape. That, for, for you younger folks, it's a big square thing that you plug in this big square hole, and it's a magnetic strip. It's like a cassette tape, but bigger, if you know what a cassette tape is. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to, yeah. It's, yeah, I know. We're in eight-track territory. But uh, we were seeing that, and Mel was like, oh, I'll just give this to them next week. And it's like, oh, they won't be here next week. 
So uh, just a moment, but uh, just to honor them. And, and sometimes, you know, I, I, the best way to do that is just give them five bucks or ten bucks or something, you know, just to have a hundred bucks, a thousand dollars, you know. Uh, but uh, just to honor them and to say, hey, you know, this is some form of way that we can just honor you and thank you for what you've done. Um, uh, it's been an honor and a privilege uh, to be here and work alongside you. Uh, and so I just want to, you know, thank you and I hope as a body that we can respond and thanks and uh, have, take a moment and, and just receive an offering for them. Is that all right if we do that this morning? Hey, y'all guys want to get down there so they can thank you? And Oh, there's a reception afterwards, right after service, uh, which, you, which we're all invited to. It's over in Legacy. So right after uh, this service and second service, we're going to have a reception for them so you can uh, love on them and kiss them and all those kinds of things. But uh, just if you would, in the spirit of giving and the, in the spirit of love and thanks, um, if if you would uh, bring um, something down, a gift down for them. All right. Would you do that with me this morning? All right. Let's do that. <laughs> I will see your They're coming. They're coming. You are uh, no, holy, I, they can. They can. Holy, it's up to them. You alone are worthy. Yeah. Lord, your glory. just shut your hands forward. Father, right now we just pray for the Rollins family. We pray that you touch them. We release them to your will and purpose to do great and mighty things for your kingdom, oh God. Father, we pray right now for the offering and the tithe that was received, that it would exponentially grow and produce mighty blessing and favor for the investment of the sower today, and that it would produce mighty fruit for your kingdom as, as it is used mightily through Epic Church. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much for your response this morning and honoring them. They will truly be missed here. I come to you this morning with a heavy heart. Uh, the Lord really uh, just put some weight on me this week. You ever just have a weight? just put down on you. I remember when I was start doing exercises and getting ready for the savage race, I got to a point to where some of the exercises were a little easier. So my instructor just threw a uh, weight vest. Anybody ever have a weight vest on? 25 pounds he threw on me as if I didn't weigh enough. He threw 25 more pounds. He said, well, now try all the exercises with that. And it made it extremely that much more difficult, but it, it kind of felt that like that this week is uh, I was reading through Hebrews, uh, kind of trying to get through the Bible in a year. And uh, it says in Hebrews chapter 12, starting in verse 25, it says, See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things which are being shaken as things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us, have mercy, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. 
Now in this chapter here, Hebrews chapter 12, he starts in the beginning there, the writer of Hebrews says that, uh, you know, God uh, loves whom he chastises. So he goes through the whole disciplinary action, how you know you love God, how God, how you can know that God loves you is that he chastises you. He corrects you. He makes course corrections in your life when he sees that you are choosing the path that you should not be going. And after you have already given your yes to God, that you want want to accomplish the will and purpose of God for your life, and you've said, yes, God, I submit and surrender, he is now in that place of guiding you and chastising you, and by that course correction, you can know that God truly loves you. And then he goes on down here to talk about this second shaking. Now, the first shaking is at Mount Sinai when God gave the tablets, the Ten Commandments to Moses. And Moses took those tablets and he went down below and they had made a golden calf and began to worship the golden calf because Moses took too long at the top of the mountain. So they heard thundering and lightning and they didn't hear the voice of God like Moses did. They just heard the thunder and light. And Mount Sinai at that time was something that they, it was the forbidden mountain. They weren't allowed to touch it. Even if an animal touched it. They had to shoot the animal with an arrow because they couldn't get close enough to it to kill the animal with a knife or anything like that because at that time it was forbidden to touch this mountain. It was a holy mountain. You could only touch it unto death. But God invited Moses up this forbidden mountain. He went up there to get receive the Ten Commandments from the Lord. And upon coming down, here they all are worshiping a golden image, a golden calf that they had made because Moses took too so long, and so we can't worship Moses as God anymore. We're going to have to make our own. So Moses, extremely upset, having fought for these people that God would not strike them dead already for the things that they had done, he goes up and he says, who is on the Lord's side? So now of the chosen people, the moment came where they had to then choose God. So God had chosen them, but now was the day, the shaking of where they must choose God. The ones that chose God moved over on behind Moses, and then a hole opened up and swallowed the rest of them. That was the first shaking, and it was on earth only. The second shaking is one that will shake both the heavens and the earth. And I feel the, the, the weight that was upon me is that in some ways I feel personally that that shaking has already begun but is imminent upon the body of Christ. The second shaking is imminent upon us. That we are about to be shaken so much so not only in, uh, on earth as it was the first time but in heaven as well. And the only things that remain will be the things that are unshakable. The question then posed to me at that point is, what is unshakable? Everything that's not made by man is unshakable. But it has to be the Lord's. Meaning that every gift and every talent that has been given to us must be dedicated and given back to him to use as he see fit, as he sees fit. In that first shaking, the law shaking, the law was written on two tablets. They had the letter of the law. In the second shaking, the law has been written on our hearts. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. These two the greatest commandments. There is now coming that time in our lives the body is now being shaken because there will be trials and tribulations that we have to go through as members and citizens of this earth that the only, only the ones that are unshakable will be able to move through and lead others into a place of light. If you are shakable, then you are no different than anyone else.
There's nothing you can say. There's nowhere you can lead anybody. There's no information that you can give them because you are the same. If they're shaking at the same time you're shaking when this shake, when this earthquake begins to take place, the spiritual earthquake in our lives begins to take place. If you're shaking at the same time they are, there's nothing you can say. But if you're standing firm and established and grounded and rooted and firmly planted in the Word of God, in the purpose of the Most High God, there's nothing that can shake you. You'll stand there firm and they're, they're just bouncing around next to you and they're looking over and saying, how are you not shaking apart right now? How is it that right now everything in my life is going to pot? Everything is in shambles, but yet you still have joy. You still have peace. You still worship. You still love. You, you're still kind. You're still doing what you're supposed to do. And it doesn't seem like the same earth is shaking around you and falling around you that's falling around me. What is different about you that I don't have? Why am I shaking and you're not shaking? And it's the fact that we've taken every gift and every talent that has been given to us by God and we've said, God, this is yours. You are transitioning yourself from owner to steward, from possessor to administrator. You are taking what God gave you and you claimed as your own and giving it back to God to say, here they are, Lord. I'm, I'm ready now to steward these gifts and talents according to your will, your purpose, and your plan for my life and for the body of Christ. Now, we know this. We know that we need to take, if we're a creative, we need to take our creative ability and give it to God. And we know that if we're, we play, uh, if we're a musician or if we sing, we take that gift and talent. And, you know, if we're administrative, we give that, you know, give that back to, to God. And whatever way, God, and we take our imagination and give it to God and accomplish great feats because we've given our mind to God. We've surrendered our intellect to Him, knowing that everything that we learn is in form to in, in some way to give glory and honor to the Most High God, not so that we can manage the earth better, but it's so that we can glorify God greater. Paul said he counted everything as dung, but I, I think that that was kind of a false statement because without the education that he had, the revelation that was given to him wouldn't have been so great. He, would have, he took the wisdom and the, and the knowledge and the languages that he had learned, and then when God added that final piece of revelation to him, it was like, oh, everything had finally made sense. And he was able to write so many letters to so many churches and, and lead and things that we're still reading about today and theologians are discussing and debating about today about what it means and how just great things because of the revelation and education that he had once he finally surrendered and submitted his intellect to God. So we move forward and, and we think about our things. We think about our money that's not really ours. It's God because he provided it for us and our, our vehicles and our means of travel and our homes and our food and whatever it is that God is providing. And we've moved into a place of ownership. We've moved into a place of possession thinking that it's ours. And we have to begin to transition our minds and transition our thinking from owners to stewards, from possessors to administrators of the provision that God has given us or else it will be shaken. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a shaking coming and it is right here and it is so imminent upon us. It is about to shake everything loose in our lives, everything that we thought was important, everything that we thought that was valuable. And I'm not talking about doomsday, and I'm not talking about the zombie apocalypse. I'm talking about in our hearts and minds, God is going to begin the process of chastising those whom he loves. And in that process, there will be a shaking in the spirit in the spiritual being of who we are and who God has called us to be, measuring us up to the purpose for which he called us and seeing if we measure up. And if we don't, we're going to begin to start shaking and shaking everything off that is keeping us from looking like our purpose. Act like our purpose, functioning in our purpose. God called us. We said yes. And now there's going to be a shaking. 
and it's going to begin to shake everything inside of us. And everything that is not dedicated to God will not survive, will be removed. Everything that's shakable has to go away because when the trials and tribulations really start, we must be like a mountain. We must be unmovable. I think about the story of Noah. That's kind of maybe the best explanation. The only thing that survived the earth was what was dedicated to God. Moses and his family, uh, not Moses, Noah and his family did what was right in the sight of the Lord. The animals were chosen by God, brought them all up on the ark, and that's whom God preserved. This is going to be the same scenario in this shaking that goes on in our life that is so imminent upon us. I don't know it. It may start tomorrow. It may start the next day. It could be a month from now. But I'm telling you, it is upon us and we need to prepare our hearts and minds and spirits and get ready to dedicate those gifts and talents back to the Lord. Lucifer was cast out of heaven because he was no longer used to the glory of God. He had instruments carved into his being. He was made of instruments. But the moment he became an owner... Instead of a steward. The moment he became the possessor. Instead of the administrator. Of the gifts that God had created in him. He was no longer of use. Into the, of the kingdom of God. And when that began to happen. A seed was planted. Where he began to think that he was more important. And more powerful. Than the most high God himself. And was cast out of heaven for it. Because he became shakable. We must begin the process of dedicating those things that God has given us, that everything that God can use for his glory must be dedicated and given back to him. Now, these are the things that we know about, and these are the things that we most commonly think about when we need to dedicate and give things back to God. So I was kind of excited about that because I'm like, you know, God, what haven't I given to you? What haven't I said that's not yours? So then I started thinking, very dangerous thing. To think in the presence of the Lord. Because you just start having these holy thoughts. It occurred to me that every fruit of the flesh that is active in my life. That is touching anything godly in my life. Now becomes shakable. It's like putting wood chips in the concrete for your foundation. It'll just start breaking up. Uh, uh, maybe a year or so ago they built a bridge recently, you know, and they, and the, the people had their wood chunks in the concrete. They had to make them do, redo the whole bridge because it could not stand up to the weight. The structural integrity had been degraded so much so that it could not stand the weight of what would be on top of it. It could not extend the expansion and contraction through heat and, and cool temperatures. They had to redo the whole bridge without wood chips in it. And what happens is, is that we have unforgiveness that Pastor Shirley spoke about maybe two or three weeks ago. And wherever unforgiveness touches inside of us is shakable. We've got to get rid of it. We have, sometimes we have bad attitudes. Bad attitudes. And, I'm, and wherever that touches is shakable. We have places inside of our heart where we're not thinking purely, where we're thinking ill of someone, or we're thinking perverted thoughts, things that are not in line and in tune with the scriptures and the word of God, and these thoughts are going in and taking over, and everywhere those thoughts touch is shakable. We must now begin the process of moving into a place to where now our thoughts and actions become into accountability, not just our things, gifts, and talents. That it is now a whole body concentration of what is affecting me, what is changing me, and what is making me shakable in my life. I can just see these things, these, these, these fingers going out of, of just a bad attitude that's in my heart or something that I'm thinking against somebody that I shouldn't think, just something terrible or somebody pulls out in front of me on the road and with the thoughts that race through my mind about what would happen if I had superhero powers at that moment. <laughs> 
And I begin to think how those little fingers are going out and beginning to touch holy things inside of me and how they're beginning to affect every gift and talent that I have and that maybe musically that's beginning to touch and taint and filter those things and beginning to change and manipulate those that they're not fully able to give 100% glory to God because those attitudes and those thoughts and those feelings and, and, and the things that are going through me that are not of God are beginning to affect the things that I've already dedicated to God. And so now I've got this process of going through. I broke down in tears saying, God, what am I now doing that I'm not giving glory to you now? And he said, healing. I was like, what? He was like, he's like, healing. When you pray for people to get healed, I'm like, God, I'm doing that for your glory. Well, are you? I was like, man. I mean, and I, I'm starting to tear up now. I'm starting to get worked up, you know, in my vehicle. I, I, I got a, you know, four-hour drive ahead of me. And I'm starting to get worked up here in this conversation. This is going to be a long car ride. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And I, and I mean, I mean, I can feel the presence of God in here and my heart's starting to race and all that kind of stuff. He says, so, so would you like to be famous for healing people? Well, heck yeah, I want to be famous. That'd be real nice if I was on every screen everywhere and we'd have major conferences. And, I, and as that's coming out of my mouth, my eyes got real big and I just kind of sat there and just drove in silence for a minute. God, forgive me. I did want, I do, not did, I do want people healed for the glory of God. But I also wanted a little bit of spotlight. A little bit. Pride rising up inside of me, touching things that are holy and making them shakable. God is moving us into a place where we can no longer afford to be shakable. We have to examine the intents and motives of our hearts and make sure that they are pure before God. Why do we want great wealth? Is it so that we can live in comfort? Why do we want this? Why do we want that? Why do we need this? Why do we need that? And begin to examine the intent of our hearts as God is giving us gifts and talents and he's doing that and then we have that pride that rises up inside of us that says now there's a moment before it becomes sin there's a moment before it begins to grab those things that are already dedicated to God that only he owns and that you are the steward of there's a moment there where you can break its power and break its back but sometimes it goes up and it starts wrapping itself around those gifts and talents in our life our attitudes our fruit of the flesh if you will begins to take hold where we become selfish and self-centered and focused I am not accusing anyone here I would just have you be unshakable I am not here to condemn you. I'm not here to tell you that what you're doing is wrong. All I know is that God told me that the shaking is coming. And he revealed to me that there are things in my life that are shakable. And he would not have me be shakable in this season that is coming. Because there are people that need to be light. There are people that need to be set up on a hill. There are people who still need to be salt in this earth that can lead away for a people who in darkness. Who can be strong enough to resist resist the temptations of the enemy who can be strong enough to resist the trials and tribulation that the enemy brings against us and fights against us and tries to drag us into the dark places and tries to drag us down and make us like everybody else on that wide broad path leading to hell and while we may not go there and while we may have confessed Jesus Christ as our personal savior we still haven't done the things necessary to get the shaking things out of our life the shakable things that we have not dedicated to God or that our pride or that our attitudes or that the things that we think in our mind are beginning to wrap themselves around the unshakable things causing them to be shakable so that when we are, we are set in the place where the second shaking is happening in our lives 
We will have no gifts. We will have no talents because he's going to remove all of the things that are shakable. Because he doesn't want you to shake. He doesn't want you to be one of those who are being shaken by the, the, when the heavens and the earth are shaken. All the shakable things will be removed. I would have you walk on the other side of these trials and tribulation and have every gift and every talent that God has given you to be steward and administrator of and be able to walk and wield and use those gifts and talents to the glory of God and to lead people that he is calling to that narrow road of salvation so that they would have a way, they would have a light. I would not have you give up your gifts and talents for this second shaking. It says in Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 3 says, But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. The Lord is faithful. He will always be there. He will never leave you. He will never say, forsake you. He will move you into the place and help you overcome the things that are shakable in your life. We have but to call upon him. We have but to communicate to the Lord and say, Father, what is it in my life? That's shakable. What is it in my life? What attributes? What fruit of the flesh? What characteristics of this earth am I still carrying around that's beginning to affect those holy, dedicated things in my life that are causing me to be shakable, that are causing them to be shakable? So when this second shaking comes in my life, I would, ha I would be unshakable. Father, what are those things right now? Be faithful to me, O oh God, and show me and reveal these things in my life that are shakable. I do not want to be shakable in this next season. I don't want to be shakable for the plan and purpose that you have for me and for this earth and for the body of Christ, God. I, I cry out to you, the faithful God, to show me and reveal to me the shakable things in my life so that I can remove, my, remove them from me. I, I do not want want them to be stripped from me and take every talent. I don't want to find out what's not, what is shakable when I'm shaking. I want to know now so that when the shaking comes, they will not be removed from me. Crying out to God. That four hour journey in the car became a, 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 a cry out to God to find everything that had an impure motive behind it. Because I don't want to do it if it's not for the glory of God. And I certainly don't want to do it if it's going to be shaken out of me. If something in my life is touching something holy or something dedicated in my life, a gift or a talent or something that God has given me, and it's wrapping itself around it so that when the shaking comes, that gift and talent goes with it. God, please reveal those things in my life that are shakable. So that we can deal with it now because I don't want to deal with it when the shaking comes. I don't want to run out of gas on the way. You know, if you know you're going for a long journey, you pack up all these things, pack some gas. Make sure you got plenty for the trip. But if you don't pack those things, you might run out of gas on the way. You might get a flat tire. If you don't have a spare one in the trunk, you're in trouble. You need to know before you go on your journey. Right now is the time before the second shaking is here in our lives in the body of Christ. Right now is the time that you can say, God, whatever it is that's shakable, deal with it now.
God, reveal to my mind. Bring it to the forefront of my thoughts, the things that are shakeable in my life, the things that I haven't dedicated to you, where my imagination, where my thoughts, where my intellect hasn't been given to you, or the administrative ability that I have, or the creative ability that I have, or the organizational skill set that I have, or the, the ability to uh, in the ministry of helps that I have, God, the, the, the outreach mindset that you have given me, Lord, I, I give it back to you. The, where I, my ability to play instruments, I give it back to you. And Father, if there's anything that is in me that's still grabbing a hold of it, anything unpure in me, any uh, motive that is not aligned with the will and purpose and plan of God for my life or the body of kingdom, uh, the body of Christ or the, or the kingdom of God, right now begin to strip it out of me, begin to remove it, begin to purge that out of me, Lord. For, uh, Father, move me into a place to where I'm unshakable for your will, unshakable for your purpose, as these trials and tribulations begin to rise up inside of that I am unmovable, that I'm established in your will and your word. I'm established in your purpose and your plan, oh God. We begin to cry out to him that we are unshakable. God, let us be unshakable. Let us be unshakable, Lord. Let us be unshakable, God. Let us recall the things that are not of you, that are grabbing a hold of the things that you have given us. And let us begin to cut them off and cast them out. There's a song that's kind of like a prayer. And it says, God, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. At the end of that, it was funny how it just kind of comes on the radio at that moment. You know, the Pandora list plays that song after you've prayed. Because at the end of that, that pretty much summed up everything. God, whatever you're doing in this next season, don't do it without me. Whatever I have to give up, whatever it is that I have to dedicate to you, whatever needs to be evicted from my heart and my mind and, and my body and whatever it is, I, I want it to be gone. I began to understand if your eye offends thee, pluck it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. I began to understand what that really meant because I don't want anything that's going to keep me from being used in this next season. And it's the shakable things that's going to keep us from being effective for the plan and purpose of God. God, whatever you're doing, in this season, don't do it without me. God, whatever you're doing in this next season, don't do it without me. Whatever you want me to do, whatever I need to say, whatever number of scriptures I need to read, however many prayers I need to have, whatever it is that I need to give up, whatever I, it is that I need to cut off and cast out, whatever it is that I'm possessing and not being administrative of, I give it back to you, whatever it is. Because God, in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. I need to be valuable to the kingdom. Don't do it without me. I want to be used mightily for your will, for your purpose, for your plan in the body of Christ. Whatever you're doing in this next season, don't do it without me. Whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. God, I just pray right now that the body of Christ would rise up and get a revelation of the things that they have not dedicated back to you. Father, right now I ask that you do a, begin to do a physical inspection, a spiritual inspection inside of us over every thought and over everything that flows through us, everything that comes out of our spirit, everything that comes out of our heart, and begin to let us examine the motives and intents of our heart, begin to examine all the gifts and talents that you have given, and see one by one, have we given them to you? Have they been dedicated to you? Or we are claiming ownership of the things that you have given us, the things that have been created by God? Are we allowing the fruit of the flesh to grab hold of those things that have been dedicated in our life, and allowing them to be shakable, messing up the foundation? of our hearts, messing up the foundation of our mind. Oh God, right now give us the revelation. Begin to inspect us, Lord. So when the season of shaking begins, that you will find your people unshakable. Rather, right now, 
Give us the revelation. Would you stand with me this morning? Would you just lift your hands or open your hands before the Lord and ask him to begin to inspect you. Every, every heart thought, every mind thought, every spiritual thought that is inside of you and ask him to begin to begin an inspection process of you and find those places that are shakable in your life and begin to bring them to the forefront of your mind. Begin to bring them to your understanding and shine light and give revelation to you on how to evict them from your life and how to remove the shakable things now so that they are not removed in the second shaking that is imminent upon us. Father, right now, give us the revelation. Father, right now, give us the understanding. Let us be usable in this next season. Father, right now, we ask for the revelation Whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Let us not buy a ticket to the event and sit back in a, in a seat and watch it happen. Let us be active participants in the season. this area, you know that this area is available. Our ministry team is available to pray for you, to come into agreement with you, to, for, for healing, for strength, for wisdom, for revelation. If you need to just come down here as a symbol of dedicating and giving yourself away everything, then this area is open. It is welcome and available to you. God can do the same thing right there in your seat. He can do it. He did it to me on, on the way to a job site. Four-hour car drive. Doesn't matter. It can be on your way home. It can be on the way to the restaurant. It could be later this evening. It could be tomorrow. But let your prayer be, God, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Amen. If you feel released at this time, you're dismissed. Have a great day. God bless you. Go out and change someone's life. Remember, we're saying goodbye to the Rollins. And there next door, we have a reception for them. For those of you who'd like to come down, we are available to pray for you. Or if you just need to pray and dedicate some things back to the Lord, please do so. Love you guys.